All right, here we go with assignment 10D. This is the same thing as 10C. Again, if you want a more in-depth uh, conversation about how to do some of these things, go ahead, take a look at uh, the video of 10C. That's probably the better uh, explanation-wise of, um, of, of this lesson. Uh, but uh, here we go. Um, what I'd like to do is begin by writing down the formulas that I'm going to be using. And then uh, the, pretty much the formulas just kind of take care of themselves. Um, okay, so I notice in problem number, oh, sorry, three, sorry, here we go. Pro, starting with problem number one, I have sigmas in this problem. Uh, and so that implies that my margin of error in this case is going to be the ZC and it's going to have the sigmas. So sigma one squared divided by N1, sigma two squared divided by N2, uh, this one right here. Okay, so we see that I have a confidence of 99%. So this is going to get me my ZC for this particular problem. Again, you look at the Z table at that little box that it's on the bottom. Uh, so let's go ahead to that uh, portion of the, uh, the Z table, that little box, so 99% gives me a ZC of 2.58. So 2.58 in there. Okay, so I have all of the pieces necessary to get this margin of error. Uh, so I begin with the inside, so that sigma one squared divided by N1 plus sigma two squared divided by N2. All right. That is all on the inside of a square root, so I go ahead and square root that, and then multiply by the CC, which is 2.58 in this particular case. All right, now I need that confidence interval. The confidence interval, I have to kind of write a little small here, is x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus e, which is less than mu 1 minus mu 2, which is less than x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus e. All right, so that middle piece is going to stay that middle piece, and I'm just going to get the two answers to the two sides. So the left-hand side is x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus e. And then the right-hand side is x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus e. Okay, so I see that um, I have a negative positive. Again, here are the, uh, the three different results. You could have positive positive, which implies that mu1 minus mu2 is going to be greater than zero. You could have negative negative which would say mu1 minus mu2 is less than zero. Or in this case, where you have a negative positive, implies that mu1 minus mu2 is question mark zero. We're unable to prove a difference between. That's, that's kind of what we're going to get. So here we go. Let's officially say our answer. So mu1 minus mu2 is question mark zero. I don't know if it's positive or negative. That means mu1 is question mark mu2. So we're unable to prove a difference between the averages of the Likert responses of one to two. Make sure you say the word average, especially when you're dealing with mu's. You have to, I have to see the word average. So we're unable to prove the difference between the average Likert responses of fishing versus camping. 
a Likert response, by the way, is, is something like it says, like, you know, on a scale of one to five, how much do you enjoy fishing? Or something like that. That's what a Likert response is. Okay, in question number two, we have S's. Uh, so that makes our margin of error, in this case, TC of S1 squared divided by N1 plus S2 squared divided by N2. So we need uh, to get our TC. Uh, so in this situation, we have a confidence of 98%. And our degree of freedom, again, we take a look at the smaller of the two ends, that's 15, the smaller of the two ends, and get the degree of freedom from that. So our uh, degree of freedom in this case is 14. So a confidence of 98% at a degree of freedom of 14. Again, this is on the T table. Okay, so we have a degree of freedom of 14 and a confidence of 98%. So that gives us a TC of 2.624. All right, we're ready to rock and roll with our margin of error. So I begin with the inside. So that's S1 squared divided by N1 plus S2 squared divided by N2. That's all in the inside of the square root, so I go ahead and square root that, and then multiply, in this case, by TC. All right. Got that margin of error. All right, confidence interval is x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus e, mu 1 minus mu 2, and then x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus e. So this, that's 475 x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus e. And then x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus e. Okay. Again, we have a negative positive, so uh, this will get the question mark. So this are dealing with mu, so this is the average. You gotta use the word average. Again, try to use the X bar as your descriptor, the average radius cases. I like, I'm not doing this is the number of radius cases. Able to turn, determine a difference between the uh, average number of radius cases of region one versus uh, region two. All right, same kind of questions. Uh, do it again. Uh, here again, we have sigmas. So that margin of error is going to be the ZC with sigmas, sigma 1 squared divided by N1 plus sigma 2 squared divided by N2. 
Here we have a confidence of 90%. So that will help me get the ZC here. So look at that Z table. 90% gives me a ZC of 1.645. Okay, and away we go. I uh, begin with uh, sigma 1 squared uh, divided by n1 plus sigma 2 squared divided by n2. That's square rooted. Uh, and uh, I multiply by zc, which is 1.645 in this case. All right, uh, confidence interval is x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus e is less than mu 1 minus mu 2. It's less than x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus e. All right, so here we go, x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus e and oh shoot sorry x bar one minus x bar two plus e all right so here we have two negative numbers so that means mu1 minus mu2 is less than 0, which means mu1 is less than mu2. So the average of 1 is less than the average of 2. So the average population percentage who attended college uh, 65 or older so the average of one is less than Average of two. Average uh, from twenty five to thirty four. So the average population percentage who attended college by the older is less than the average of twenty five to thirty four year olds. Okay, here we have S's, so this is going to be that TC, okay, so to get this TC, I have a confidence of 98%, the smaller of the two ends, well, they're both the same size as 30, so that degree of freedom is 29. So degree of freedom of 29 with confidence of 98%. All right, so degree of freedom of 29%. intersect with a confidence of 98%. And so that'll be uh, 2.462. 2.462. All right, and the way we go, we have 39, we have S1 squared divided by N1 plus S2 squared 
divide by n2. That's square rooted. And multiplied by pc. All right, so we now establish our confidence interval x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus e is less than mu 1 minus mu 2 is less than x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus e. The middle piece stays the same, mu 1 minus mu 2. And so I get the two answers. So the first one is x bar minus x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus e and then I have x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus e. All right, so one of my answers is negative, my other one is positive, so that gets the question mark and we're unable to prove stuff. So we're unable to prove the difference between the average uh, score on the test between the experimental group and the control group. 